This is Monkey World in Dorset, the largest ape and monkey rescue centre on the planet. Today on Monkey Life. It's been a two-day journey, but the Chilean capuchins have finally landed in the UK. It's a bit chilly, so we've got to hurry up and try and get them off into the vehicles, and the trip back to Monkey World should be about 45 minutes, and then straight into the houses. So the, the essence here really is speed and trying to keep them warm. It's treat time at the park, and alpha male Tom is determined to get his hands on them. And there's bad news for Aris in the orangutan house. A couple of days ago, he had a knee operation, but something has gone seriously wrong. The next morning, um, he was found effectively in a state as if he'd had, in simple terms, some kind of stroke. Monkey World has been rescuing primates from all over the globe for 21 years. I just have a question for the layout of the house and all. But it has never been involved in an operation as big as this one. Rehoming 88 capuchin monkeys from a research laboratory in Chile, South America. It's been a massive task. But today, after a two-day flight, the Capuchins have finally landed in the UK. They've been flown by the Chilean Air Force, and on the ground, the military procedure continues. Very emotional time. This is the end of a long, long project. I didn't know if we would get 88 here fit and well, but I think we've done it. I think we've bloody done it, and they're all going to have a chance to live proper lives again. Perfect. All 88 capuchins have survived the journey and are looking remarkably at ease. Now they want to get them safely back to Monkey World as quickly as possible. It's a bit chilly, so we've got to hurry up and try and get them off into the vehicles, and the trip back to Monkey World should be about 45 minutes and then straight into the houses. So the, the essence here really is speed and trying to keep them warm. For many of the Capuchins, this is the first time they've ever seen daylight. In less than an hour, the Capuchins will begin the rest of their new lives at Monkey World. Later, the primate care staff finally meet the new residents. And after a lifetime in solitary confinement, they are amazed to discover that some capuchins are showing signs of natural behavior. Down here has um, actually started scent rubbing itself with its um, onion, which is a behavior. You see wild capuchins. And it's treat time for the squirrel monkeys. Jelly and ice cream, monkey style but some still prefer their insects au naturel. <laughs> the new 88 capuchins will soon be living with Monkey World's four existing capuchins. These primates are the most intelligent of the small monkeys, so the park is constantly thinking up new ways to stimulate them. Today, they're placing these cups filled with yoghurt just outside the enclosure. So will the capuchins work out how to get to them? First up, it's the alpha male of the group, Tom. And he's here to show the others just how it's done. Tom loves his food, and nothing is going to stand between him and that yoghurt. Nothing, that is, except for his short, fat arms. Tom is not a happy monkey. To add to Tom's frustration, TJ has long, slender arms, and he reaches the cup easily. There's only one thing for it. Tom's going to have to confiscate TJ's yoghurt. He is the boss, after all. It's time for Gizmo. To have a go. He's the shyest member of the troop, but he is clever. 
Capuchins often use sticks as tools in the wild to bring things closer to them, and that's just what Gizmo's doing to bring one of those cups closer. TJ's following Gizmo's lead. He's found a stick that's just the right size. Now he's carefully reshaping it so it's perfect for the job. Tom realises that this is the way to get hold of the yoghurt, and he's found his own stick. Unfortunately, it's a rubbish stick, and he gives up in a strop. Ah well, he can always pinch TJ's stick. He is the boss, after all. At the moment, Tom gets what he wants, when he wants. But he may not be the boss for much longer, because... Across the park, the 88 Capuchins have finally arrived to join him and his little troop. But before Tom can meet his new family, all 88 Capuchins will be unloaded into a holding area to recover from their 7,000 mile journey. Do you want to move the van forward? The big area first or the what small you, what area? What do you want to do? Well, we don't know which ones are going to end up in there no, at the moment. It doesn't really matter. Well, so we'll take, fill the big area I first. I would fill the big area and then hey. Where do we go then? Let's do that. The primate care staff have waited a long time for this day, but it has finally arrived. And they are all on hand to unload and look after the vast number of animals. Some of the 88 capuchins are old and in poor health, so the team hadn't expected them all to survive the journey. But incredibly, they all did. And the primate care staff are impressed with how well they're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's obviously the day we've been waiting for, from plans on a piece of paper to actually them all turning up and they're all alive and well and they're all chirping. They're all just such different characters, so, yeah, it's, it's such an amazing day and it's great that we finally got there. But we're, we're all positive um, about getting these animals into groups and, and the future for them at Monkey World. The wooden lids and stuff. This has been the park's biggest rescue ever, so it's an emotional and exciting time. I think that's everybody now unloaded and we're just double checking everybody, getting them all watered and fed. Yeah, I think we're good. Everybody's here, all 88. Fantastic. Transporting the capuchins was a mammoth task, and 30-year-old Gorilla needed extra attention throughout the journey because he had surgery for an abscess in his tooth before leaving Chile abscess that he had in his tooth that was coming up on his face has actually over the flight time erupted out. So it's actually relieved a lot of pressure and let a lot of the pus that was trapped up in his sinus, it's let it out. So actually he's healing up really well. He's feeling a lot more comfortable and as you can see a lot more perky. So really pleased he's made the journey really well. He's an old boy at 30 years old. He's only got probably another five to eight years left in him, really. And, you know, he's taken the journey really, really quite well. It's taken the team three hours to unload and feed all 88 capuchins. Yes. They'll be left here overnight to settle, and in the morning they'll be split into two groups. Although they could see one another in the laboratory, the majority of them never made physical contact. So integrating them into social groups is going to be a big challenge. Some of these individuals are just going to take like a duck to water being with others of their own kind and perhaps getting a more natural environment here at the park and others are just going to be so shot away from what's happened to them over their lifetime that there's not going to be a lot of hope for them. So we'll just have to wait and see how each individual pans out. But that's why we took the ADA. We wanted to give everybody an opportunity to have a good life and a more natural life. Despite their unnatural backgrounds, amazingly, some of the monkeys are showing natural behaviour. This one down here has um, actually started scent rubbing itself with its um, onion, which is a behaviour. You see in wild captions and we're sort of encouraging the four captions we've got here to be aware of putting an insect repellent on themselves or a uh, sort of a way of protecting their skin a bit and they sort of bite into it and salivate and then rub the juices all over themselves. Really enjoying it. They sort of go almost into a little trance when they do it. 
The fact that these capuchins still retain some natural behavior is an encouraging sign, and it's hoped that this will help them bond as a group, just like they would in the wild. But while the majority of the primate care staff work into the night to look after the new arrivals, Penny and Colin have been called next door to the orangutan house. Four-year-old Aris is extremely unwell. Usually Aris is always running around, never lying down. Like, I mean, this is, this is unheard of. This is just not Aris at all. Um, he's just really lethargic. He's just got no energy. He's sleeping all the time. He's not drinking. He's not eating. Um, he's just not Aris, really. He's Three days ago, Aris had an operation to clean a knee injury. The procedure went well, and he had no problems coming round from the anaesthetic, but now he's taken a turn for the worse. He has little periods of being awake, in that he'll stretch and yawn, possibly even squeak grind his teeth a little bit and then back to this uh, situation here. So it's still a case of wait and see. It's an extremely worrying time. No one knows what has happened to Aris, so vet Mike Nathan is making an emergency visit to the park. I'll we'll be with him all night, just keep an eye on him, checking his heart rate every now and again and also his breathing as well, and taking his temperature. Just to keep a close eye on him, and obviously, if I can, try and coax some fluids down him as well. But at the moment, he's generally not that interested in that bit. We'll keep going. And coming up, will a tough decision have to be made? But ultimately, you've got to ask yourself: you have an animal here. If we can't give them a quality of life, we shouldn't let them suffer. At Monkey World Rescue Center, Orangutan Aris is seriously unwell. Vet Mike Nathan has been urgently called in. Well, he recovered, as far as I'm aware, well from the operation. He was a bit um, doddery in the late evening. And the next morning, um, he was found effectively in a state as if he'd had in simple terms, some kind of stroke. I think he's had a vascular accident. Something has gone wrong up here, which is almost certainly the result of going through the surgery, even though the surgery wasn't intense. It was something we had to do. So this is really quite sad and unfortunate. Now, he's left almost in a sort of zombie-like state. He comes in and out of consciousness. And he's getting slowly worse in spite of the things we're trying to do. The main concern for the team is that Aris is as comfortable as possible, but they're still unsure of how much damage has been done. Yesterday he still had his knee reflex and pupil reflex, which mm -hmm. would, you know, make yeah, his chances quite give, good. You, you, we've got to give him a... You've got to give him a cut-off. We've got to say, this is what we want to see. If he's not improving, we have to say, we're a rescue centre. We are trying to give him a quality of life. It's likely that Aris has suffered some sort of stroke that was probably caused by a blood clot in his brain. He's having problems swallowing, but it's crucial he's kept hydrated. He's been put on a drip and Penny is wetting his mouth. We'll dribble it out, but um, basically it's to um, uh, just try and make that mouth feel a bit more comfortable for him. Uh, he's not going to take anything properly because he's swallowing and then ch choking a little bit. Um, but she's going to do some uh, physio with him and try and keep that moving. And we've just shown her uh, the sorts of things she can do. And I think he's better sitting up than lying out flat. If he does lie out flat, you've got to change his position all the time because he'll get fluid then collecting in different parts of his lung which won't make him a comfortable boy at all. The team has to make some difficult decisions when animals fall ill. 
And that's just what they have to do with Aris now. Ultimately, you've got to ask yourself, you have an animal here that is here because we're a rescue centre. If they can't have a quality of life, we shouldn't let them suffer. And I don't know when he, if he comes out of this whether he's going to be brain damaged. If he were human, you'd be giving him time and time again and you'd be you know, going for things because you can put us through all those things and people will look at that quality of life and say, well, OK, he's going to be confined to a wheelchair or whatever, but we've still got our mental intellect with luck. If he doesn't even have that ability, what are we doing to him? And I've also got to think that the staff here you know, they know these animals individually. It matters to them what the quality of life is going to be, and none of us want to see an animal who has no quality of life. This has come about after a routine operation, and it's a shock to everyone. I'm upset that it's happened. We were very happy with how it had all gone, how we'd, how we'd all handled it. We went into it for the right reasons. Never happened to us before. I've never seen it in my veterinary career, but you hear about it, it happens. And um, I don't think that we've done anything incorrectly. So it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's very, very sad. Aris is on medication to try and stabilize his condition. A blood test will also be sent to the lab to monitor his progress. And later, the results of the blood tests are back. Mm -hmm. How low is it? But is there any hope for Aris? Monkey World is home to three squirrel monkeys and 14 marmosets. In the wild, they both come from South America, and here at the park, some of them share an enclosure. These primates are very small. In fact, a marmoset isn't much bigger than a human's hand. But despite their small size, both the squirrel monkeys and marmosets have big appetites, especially for insects, and they'll literally do anything to get their hands on them. So today, the team have come up with a real treat for them. Insects in jelly. This might look horrible to us, but to these guys, this is about as good as it gets. In the wild, squirrel monkeys spend more than half their day foraging for insects. So the team are constantly thinking of new ways to make them work hard for their food. The squirrel monkeys are dominant over the marmosets, so they get to investigate the jellied insects first. Alien, is a bossy and curious female. She goes straight to the food, but she's not sure of that jelly, so she quickly grabs a creepy crawly and heads off. The marmosets are even more wary of that jelly than the squirrel monkeys. They're not even willing to pick out the insects. Unlike the squirrel monkeys, who are now all picking their way through the sticky jelly to get to those delicious bugs. These three were rescued from a laboratory in Holland, and until coming here, they'd never been outside. Now they spend their days enjoying their specially designed enclosure. It's been planted to attract insects. A squirrel monkey extravaganza. Here they can live and forage as naturally as possible. And even if bugs in jelly is not quite to their liking, it is interesting, and the insects still taste great. At the Orangutan House, Monkey World's vet Femke is discussing Aris's blood results. Mm -hmm. How low is it? They need to ensure Aris's vital organs are still functioning correctly. They can tell this from the chemical composition of his blood. 
So the blood results show actually that the electrolytes are, are all within the normal values, which is great. Things like potassium and chloride and um, bicarbonate, they're all within the normal values because sometimes when animals get dehydrated, um, those electrolytes, they are called, they go off balance and you have to correct them, but um, they're still fine, so that's good news. But the glucose is a bit low, which is to be expected because he hasn't eaten in a few days. So we're going to give him some glucose as well, but for the rest actually there wasn't very much to see on the blood results. So Iris hasn't gone any worse, but he hasn't gone any better. His mental state is still the same actually. It's good that Aris isn't getting worse, but he also isn't improving. It's a hugely worrying time for the team. Over the next 24 hours, they'll continue to closely monitor and care for him. Just a question of maintaining him for the time being until we decide whether he's getting worse or if he's showing any sign of getting better, any sign of getting better is a positive. If he's just staying as he is, if he's getting worse, it's not going to be fair and we'll let him go. All right, so fingers crossed. Come on. Oh, Missy. I can't believe you've got one of the biggest characters here. And next time, Aris's intensive care continues. But has there been any improvement in his condition? Half the battle when you're that poorly is sort of keeping the will to live. The woolly monkey baby finally gets a name. And the alpha male chimpanzees show their troops just who's boss. But could there be an alpha male takeover brewing? With Paco, he's starting to find his feet within the structure of the boys, and he's finding his way up to the top. 